So when you first install a distro like Arch Linux, everything will be working fine until you go to do one thing, and that's work with audio. So today I'm going to show you how to control your Ulsa audio through a couple of different methods and then how I'm doing it on my system. So if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help will be really appreciated. So now that's out of the way, let's get started. <laughs> Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So I apologize for whatever's happening with the lighting right now. I haven't got it perfect because I've just moved into a new room and also the sound might be a bit off so I'm just trying to work on all that but for today we're just going to work with it as it is. So the first thing you're going to want to install is a program called Ulsa Util. So Ulsa by itself is a part of the actual kernel so you don't need to install that so you will have Ulsa already installed. You can use other things like Pulse but it's just easier to work with also for today. If you want to do stuff like that, you can do it in some other time. Or I might do a separate video on that. I don't know. But I am running also as like my main sound system thingy on my system. So the first thing we're going to want to do is install the also utils package. So sudo pacman s also dash utils. I already have it installed, so it's just going to try to reinstall it. And that'll take a couple of seconds and now it'll be perfectly working. So there's two different ways that we can go about this. So there's a terminal based interactive application or there's the direct command line app. So we're going to start with the command line app. And then later in the video, I'm going to go to the interactive program. And then I'm going to show you the way that I'm doing it. So I'm using the terminal app to do that, but I've got my own like handler script for it. So we'll go through that at the end. Okay, first thing we're going to do is look at the man page for the program I'm going to use, which is called Amixer or Amixer. I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce that. Anyway, it's spelled like this. So the things we're going to be looking for in here are very simple. So if we just run Amixer with nothing, it'll print out all of our sound devices, all of our sound cards and all everything we need to know about. But if we want more specific information, we can actually look at that man page. So I guess, Actually, before we go into the man page, we will just print out all of our devices. So we run Amixer, we'll pipe that into less so it's a bit easier to see. And I've got all of these sound devices. Okay, so you've got like my master, my headphone, and my speaker. Those are the main ones we're going to be caring about today. There are other things you can control in here. Like, let's see, I'm not even sure what half these are, but you've got your capture device, auto mute mode, Whatever that is, you've got your headset volume. I don't have a headset plugged in, but if you do, then you can control that. And a bunch of other stuff in here. You've got like your internal mic, your internal mic boost, loopback. I can't remember what loopback is, but I probably should know what that is. I feel like that's important. Anyway, so now to actually go to that man page. So the main things we're going to be caring about here are the set and the get things. Set and the get options. That's the word I was looking for. And also, I guess it's probably important to look at the info one in case you have multiple mixer devices. So we'll start with running that. So if we run Amixer with info, I only have my default card and my default mixer device. So I'm not going to have to actually worry about actually setting any of those when I actually try to control anything because when you don't give it anything, it'll just default to whatever your default card and mixer device is. But if you have multiple, then it might be a problem. You're probably not going to have multiple unless you have gone out of your way to install multiple sound cards. So it's probably not gonna be an issue for you. But if it is, then you can just reference them by the number of that device. So to do that, we go back to that man page. And that is just with the dash C and the dash D option. So that'll let you list out the card number and also the device number. So I'm not sure about the device. Okay, I guess it's named default. So if you were to put dash D and then default in there, that would use the same card and for or the same device, sorry. And for the card, I know that the default card is numbered at zero. So if you do want to be extra specific, then you can do that. But if you've only got one card, then it's really not necessary. So if we just want to get a list of the controls, we can use the controls option. So we'll do that now. So Amixer controls. Okay, that'll list out all the controls. So if we pipe that into less, we can get a better look at that. 
and that is all of my sound devices. But we're not really going to be worrying about the individual devices. What I'm more worrying about today, and which what you're probably going to be more worried about on your system, is controlling just your general volume levels. Once you know how to do that, you can go and actually customize any of this other stuff later by yourself. It's not too difficult once you know how to do this. So if we run Amex it back into less again, as I said, the main things that we're going to be caring about are our master volume. So that'll control the volume of all of your other tracks, your headphone volume, if you've got a thing plugged into your headphone port or if you've got like Bluetooth headphones or something like that. And also the speaker volume, which is just the speakers of your device. You might not have speakers, but that option is still there. If you're on a laptop, obviously you're gonna have speakers, but on a desktop system, it might treat speaker as your monitor speakers. I don't know though. I I know most people disable them because they're awful. So if you're on a desktop, that's probably not an issue for you. But anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Let's actually go on how to actually change this volume. So it's very, very simple. So if we run Amixer, and then if we wanted to find the card, we could go dash C zero, but I'm not gonna worry because I only have one card. And then for the device, you could go dash D and then the name of the device. Once again, I only have my default device, so I'm not gonna worry with that. And then we can go set and the name of the control. So let's say we want to set the volume of the master device, for example. And then if we go the volume, we wanna set it at. So in here, you can do a couple of different things. I will actually bring that up again. I should have gone over that before. So what am I doing? Man, Amixer. So if we go down to set, you can set it in a couple of different ways. So you can set it with a percentage. You can actually go the actual percentage you want to set it to or plus or minus by that percentage. You can set it to a decibel or plus or minus that decibel. And also you can do cap, no cap, mute, unmute and toggle. I'm not sure what cap and no cap are, but I know that mute is obviously gonna mute it. Unmute is going to unmute it. And then toggle, I believe, will turn the device on and off. Ones you're mainly gonna care about are mute and unmute, and then also setting the volume level. You're probably not gonna to toggle it on and off, but if you really want to, then there is also that option. Okay, so if we go back to that command that we were writing before, I should have actually, you know, ran it so it would be in my history, but anyway, not too important. So we're gonna set the volume of the master device. Let's say we want to mute the de master device. So if we do that, okay, that'll then print out the new state of the device. In here, I believe it says off when it is muted. So if we unmute that, yeah, it's not entirely clear. That should probably say something like mute and unmute, but it says on and off. So yeah, ignore that. It's a little bit confusing. So let's say we wanna raise the volume by, for example, 10 decibels. So if we do it like this, then this should raise it. I did notice a problem off camera that I will show in a second. So we raised that and now we are at minus 22. We were at minus 33, so yeah. It's actually minus 22.5 because sometimes it doesn't actually raise it by exactly what you specify. I'm not sure why, it seems like a weird idea to make it do that. There's probably some reason for it, I just don't know why. But the thing that I mentioned that was a problem. So if we go minus 10 dB, I don't know if this is a problem with writing it out like this or if it's a bash problem that's trying to parse it weirdly. But if we do that, then it treats it as a bunch of different options. But if we look at the man page again for Amexer, then we can actually see that that is a valid syntax. So in here, so if we go negative 12.5 decibels, that is a thing you can do. So maybe you can do it in a script, but for some reason writing it out on the terminal like that, it tries to parse it weirdly. I don't know. I haven't actually tried it actually setting decibel like that. So it might just be a weird decibel problem. So you can also do the same thing with setting percentages, but there's really no point going over that after also going over decibel. It's just basically the exact same thing, but instead of doing decibel, you do a percentage sign. Before we go into my script, the last thing I wanna go over is the interactive program to set this. So you've probably seen this one before because this is the one that a lot of people will mention when you first start using Arch or some other similar distro. So this comes with the Ulsa Utils program. It is called not a mixer like we were using before. This one is called Ulsa Mixer. So we run Ulsa Mixer. And yeah, as I said, you've probably seen this one before. You can do things like raise and lower the volume in here with the arrow keys. You can raise and lower with the Vim keys as well, but you can't actually go left and right with those. So you're probably better off using the arrow keys or just, I guess, using the CLI app, CLI, whatever, you know what I was talking about. The, the one we looked at just before. You can raise and lower any of these tracks. If you press M, that'll mute it. M again will unmute it. So zero, zero means that it is unmuted. MM means that it is muted. You can go through any of these, change all of these, Nothing too special. If you're not sure about how to do anything, there's this help menu bound to F1. 
that'll bring up all the keys in here. So let's say we wanted to do something like show a list of all of our playback controls. So if we press F3, I didn't even pay attention to what key it was. <laughs> F1, that was bound to F3. I guess we don't have any playback controls that it's gonna list out. Okay, let's say we want to list out our system info. Press F2, that'll have out all of those there. So let's say we wanna look at our cards, for example. That'll show all of our cards. And this basically does everything that the CLI app does, plus a few extra things that you might need, might not. But for the basic stuff, you can just use the terminal app we were using before and have absolutely no difficulties. So I'm not actually using this myself for my sound control. I'm not using the Ulsa mixer. I am using a mixer though, but I'm not using it directly. I'm using it through a little handler script that I've written. So that'll be in my scripts folder in a script called vol control. That'll take a second to load up. Okay. So it's still set up for when I was using i3. So it's still a bit of a bound to i3 and it's it still works as it is. It's just not as clean as it could be. So what I'll do is I'll pass in a couple of different options. So if I pass in the word all, then I've only got one thing to handle for that and that's mute. So I don't really ever control all of my volumes all at the same time unless I'm doing a mute. So if I pass in all as the first argument and then mute as the second argument, then it'll either mute all of my devices or unmute all of my devices depending on whether they're muted or not. And then for the other thing, if I don't put in all, then it will assume that what I've put in is a control name. So let's say I put in say speaker. So if I, it'll then do Amexa set speaker and I usually have my volume raise and lower to plus 2% and minus 2%. I feel like that's a good middle ground between jumping too quickly and jumping too slowly. So this will basically end up running as Amexa set speaker plus 2% or minus 2%. And that works pretty much all the time. And then I've got that bound to, I think for speaker, it's something like super S and super shift S and then headphone is super H and super shift H. And then obviously I've got my master volume. Actually, this isn't obviously. On my laptop, I've got little icons for my volume up and volume down on my up and down arrow keys. So I've got up bound to raise the volume and down bound to lower the volume. So that makes it just pretty simple like that. Obviously you can set your keys whatever you want and doesn't really matter, but I feel like it makes it much easier to have a handler script because it just saves you a bit of time actually getting stuff working properly. Because once you've got the handler script working, really you just need to worry about what you're passing into it and then everything will work fine. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you liked this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you've got any other ideas for how to fix this background lighting or just any ideas in general, leave them in the comment section down below and I'll check them out. If you wanna chat with me, go to my Discord, that'll be down below. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check that out if you wanna see other videos like this. That'll probably be my Linux tutorials playlist because this is a basic Linux tutorial and that's probably where it's gonna fit. Or maybe software showcase. No, I reckon Linux tutorials. So if you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I don't know how I managed to wait this long into my outro to remember to say that. Down below, I've got my Twitter and my Macedon, so go check those out if you want to get video updates. And I think that's pretty much everything for me now, so I'm out.